This is my coach, he's really short. <laughs> We're here with Jack Redding, and I'm gonna be coaching him. <laughs> One, two, three, listen. What's up, bikers? We're here with Jack Redding, pro downhiller. So we're gonna crack on with Jack, test two minute maxes, maximum weights, and some mobility screening, which is super important. This testing is something that we do with all people that subscribe to the program. We'll check in at the end and see how he gets on. Yeah, so nothing really to worry about there. Oh yeah, so it's all right. It hurts. And then just bring your knee up. TCP. Right. Yeah. I was like, I felt like I was getting close. So that's rotation. That's change of position. Okay. Feel that? You're okay there. Yeah. Fine. Any lower than that, your hamstring's gonna pull your pelvis under. Yeah. And the fact is, people force that position, yeah. and what they don't realize is actually, it doesn't give you any more range in your hip whatsoever. It just changes the angle of your back. Yeah. So the mechanics are that you then compromise in your back for no additional benefit in your hip. Yeah. Point your toes at the rig. Now you wanna match the direction of your foot with your thigh or your knee. So bracing, bracing, bracing. Good. So we're gonna do five. It's 60 kilos. Five of these. Yep. Chest high brace. Good. Drive up. Okay. Think about that depth. All right, we're gonna do that again for three. Yeah, you knew it. See? Nice. Yes. Right there. Good. Right, deeper. Come on. Lock it down. Deep. Up. So that there was just heavy enough for you to not be able to override your default position. What we can do is make you super strong, not as low. But then at no, some point you're gonna have to unlearn that and then start all over. So why not do it now? Good. From mid chest down, tears the tension. Just press, get it done. Go on, tight. Has to be both hands pressing the same. You have to be super vigilant on where your spine is. Because the thing is, if you test the 60, and on your third rep, you start grinding it out, it's and you know down, right, I did 60. Next time I want 65, every time you're gonna be in that bad position with the most compromising weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want technical maxes. Tight, 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 straight spine. Just breathe how you like, just fucking get it done. Strong, push, push up. Go on, good. All right, first one's hardest. Second one you get. You get this one, you get this one. Push, 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 push. Third one, get it. Push, get it up. It's still moving, it's still moving. Finish it, finish it, finish it. Push it, push it, push it, push. It, push. it went down and then back up. Probably about 10 times. And it's convenient, it's on the floor now because we're gonna deadlift. It would be great if you could get a mega hinge and only bend your knees enough to keep your spine straight. Okay. So your spine's perfect there. Yeah. Now bring your knees back a touch. Yeah, so we wanna raise your hips as far as it goes whilst maintaining this. And you see the difference? Start loading up. So at 60, we'll go 80. So if you think about bracing knees, everything yeah. else naturally goes on. Three, we're just going threes from now. Good. Yeah, good starting position. Right. Strong. Good. Looks yeah, good. Really good. Is that 100? Yeah. It must be the technique. Good. Nice. Strong. Looks good. Looking for that back. Lock it down. Lock it down. Tight, tight, tight. It's strong. It's strong. Good. Nice. So you imagine what we're doing with a, with a deadlift is training a bracing of your spine. Yep and glutes and hamstrings, posterior chain. Strength, yeah. but not strength in your back extensors here. So yeah, your primary goal for these is to stabilize your spine with core and allow your hips to get more movement through. Again, tighten up. Right, call it there. Yeah. 
to. Yeah, it's just a chain. It doesn't take a lot. You did 120, you got to 130, and then it broke down because it just got over that threshold. Yeah. And to identify that and not grind through it, yeah, simply it felt be- like it could have done, but it didn't yeah. feel right. Whereas on yeah, the 120, exactly. it just felt like it was all still- If you feel like you can do, but you're unsure, then call it a day, yeah. technical max. Yeah. Two minute tests. Four balls first. I'll get the timer on. Three, two, one, go. So today, um, it's middle of October and this is almost ground zero for us. And it's going to be really good to use this as a, a platform to, to test from throughout the winter and see how much I can improve and where we can go from here. So the tests we've used are really functional. They're not just how much can you lift or your VO2 max. That We're actually using tests that are really dynamic and we're trying to make them so that they reflect how I will perform on the bike. Um, so that as we measure to see if I improve, we hope that those improvements will then be reflected in the way that I'm riding when I come to performing at the weekend at the races. The reason we're doing this is because we don't just want to make me cardiovascularly fitter or just stronger in one exercise. Because downhill is such a varied sport and there's so many different demands involved, we want to just make me a, a better athlete all round. Yeah, I enjoy the tests. Um, I felt like I went okay. I've just had a few weeks off. I've had a very short holiday period from the end of the season to now. So um, yeah, on. On the strength stuff, I felt reasonable, um, and the the assault bike nearly killed me at the end. But but yeah, um, it's feeling good at the start of the off season, and excited to see how we can build as we move through. I'm Jack Redding. I've been here in the gym with Fit for Racing. It's your time. Make it count. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Flip around and start working on the bed. Your bike.